Today, I wanna to share everything you need to know to get the most out of GIMP's foreground select tool with some pro tips along the way. If you are ready, let's do it. Hello, my name is Chris Parker and it is my desire to help you elevate your GIMP editing skills. So one of the most important skills you need to master as a photo editor in GIMP is making selections. Now the foreground select tool is the most powerful selection tool in GIMP and will automatically select your foreground or the main subject. Once you've separated your foreground and background, you can do some pretty amazing things like making the background darker or replacing the background with another. How cool is that? I love it. So these are just two examples and you're only limited by your imagination. So using the foreground selection tool requires a two-step process, which I'll demonstrate in a moment. First, let's review the tool options that can be selected to refine and improve your final selection. All right, to activate the foreground selection tool, navigate to your toolbar and you'll find it within this tool group here by right-clicking and selecting it. Unfortunately, even though you'll probably use the foreground select tool a lot, GIMP doesn't offer a keyboard shortcut by default. However, you can assign one to it. And if you wanna see a tutorial on how to create a keyboard shortcut, let me know in the comments below. All right, let's navigate over here to the tool options. And the first option here allows the edge of a selection to be blurred and results in only the areas near that edge to be partially selected. So in that sense, the feathering makes a smooth transition between the edge of the foreground and the background by softly blending the edges. Now for my images, I'll set this to around five to 10. It all depends on the image and the higher the quality and the resolution, the higher I will set this. So if you're not getting the results you want, try adjusting the amount of the feather. All right, next we have draw mode. So the draw modes determine your intended selection. If your target is a subject in the foreground, then you'll use the draw foreground option. If you wanna select the background, then you're going to use the second option and draw unknown is used to refine the selection process, which I'll demonstrate later in this tutorial. Now, one thing to keep in mind, if you're trying to make a selection of your subject or the foreground and the tool isn't working as expected, it might be because you don't have the correct draw mode selected. And I've done this many times myself. And after a couple of times, you'll get into the habit of making sure the correct mode is selected. All right, so next we have stroke width, which is actually the brush size for step two of the selection process. And I'm not sure why they call it a stroke, but if you want a larger brush size, you can do that from here. Next are some preview options for the overlays you'll see in the second step. So color refers to the color of the overlays and there will be two opacity levels of the color of your choice. Blue is the default, but if your image is of the ocean with a big blue sky, you might wanna change the color of the overlay by clicking right here and then choose the color that contrasts with the colors in your image. Next is grayscale, which is going to convert the overlay to black and white, which is similar to how a layer mask works. And this is useful when you have an image where the foreground and background are not very different from each other, and it's hard to decipher where the edge of the two are. For example, the ocean image might be ideal for grayscale instead of color. All right, so the last options are referred to as the engine. So the engine is what drives the foreground select tool. It's actually an algorithm that you can use to change how the tool functions. So the engine types are matting 11 and matting global. Global is set by default, but I prefer matting 11. Now it is possible that you're gonna get different results from either one depending on your operating system, whether it's Linux, Windows, or a Mac. Personally, I'm on a Mac. I prefer to use Levin for my photos, so I find that works best for mine, but you're gonna to have to experiment with your own images to see which option works best for you. Now, depending on which engine you use, you'll have different options to refine how it works. So for Manning 11, we have 
levels and active levels. And for matting global, we have iterations. Now for these, I will typically just use the default options and then I will refine my selection with the quick mask mode after I'm done with the foreground select tool if needed. And that seems to work best for me and my workflow. But you're going to have to go ahead and play around with these different options to see the results you get from each based on your images. And then you can decide what works best for your workflow. All right, so let me show you the steps to take to use the foreground select tool. Like I mentioned before, there's a two step process. And the first thing we need to do is create a rough outline around the outside of our subject. So I'm going to draw all the way around and I have to get back to the beginning in order to start the second process. Once you get there, you're going to notice this yellow circle, release your mouse button, then click enter or return to get into step two. So we now have two color overlays. And like I mentioned before, we can click here to change that color. So the process now is to target different colors, contrast, textures for GIMP to know what is included in the foreground. And then it's going to take that information and compare it to the areas on the outside where you didn't draw. And it's going to determine that, okay, these colors, these textures, this contrast is different from over here. And then it's going to know that that is the subject, the foreground, or whatever it is you're trying to select based on the differences between what was selected and what was not selected, or at least brushed on. Because when you get into the second step, you start off with a brush automatically. I'm going to go ahead and increase my brush size. And what we're going to do is paint on the inside of our subject now to target those colors, those textures, that contrast. And the color that you paint with doesn't really matter. It's going to automatically use the color in your foreground color swatch, which is currently black for me. So I'm going to go ahead and paint around. And usually it's probably better to paint with a contrasting color versus something dark like what I'm using, but it will work for now. So I'm just going to go along the edge here and then I will fill in the subject to give GIMP some more information about what should be part of the foreground. Again, just like with the outer outline, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just giving GIMP the information it needs in order to process that data to find exactly where the foreground is. So I'm going to go in with a larger brush now and I'm going to go ahead and select in here. Usually you don't have to do this, but this is something that I like to do in order to make sure everything is selected properly. Now to see an update of the overlays, we're going to hit enter or return. And this is going to give us an idea of what's going to be selected. So right now we have this area right here, which is going to be part of the selection. So what I want to do now is switch to the background color. I'm going to drop the width down and then I'm going to paint in here to update that part of the process. So I'm telling GIMP this is not part of the foreground. It's actually the background. So let's hit enter or return again and we get our final selection. Now, like most selection tools, it's not 100% perfect. You're not going to get exactly what you want selected all the time. Sometimes you might, depending on the difference between the foreground and the background in regards to contrast and colors. So if I grab my zoom tool here and zoom in, we can see that this part of the background is being selected. So this is when I would go into another selection tool like the quick mask mode to clean that up. Now, if you would like to see a tutorial on the quick mask mode, let me know in the comments below. All right, so I've gone ahead and restarted the process of making the selection with the foreground select tool and I've applied the initial brush stroke. But I now want to show you what happens with draw unknown versus draw background to remove the area where you accidentally went outside of the foreground. So the draw unknown is going to work very similar to what we have in Photoshop, which is known as refine edge. So if you've ever used Photoshop before, you kind of know what that is if you've used it. So it's basically the same principle. You're going to select draw unknown. I'm going to go ahead and drop my stroke width here. 
and you're gonna paint along the edge of your subject now. So you're not selecting either the foreground or the background. You're just letting GIMP know, okay, this is the edge between the foreground and the background. And then based on the colors between either side and the contrast and the colors, go ahead and determine or decipher which is the foreground and the background. So it's going to update accordingly. And then when I click enter or return, it should update that mask. And you can see it's definitely a lot better than it was previously. Now, when I click select or enter or return again, you're gonna notice that it's been updated on this side much better. And over here, we have some area along the arm that's kind of not selected as well as part of our sleeve here. So again, no matter how many times you go over this, it's not going to be perfect 100% of the time. In this case, there's too many similar colors up in this area for GIMP to determine what is actually the foreground and what's the background. So in this case, you have to use another selection tool to update your selection. All right, to continue elevating your GIMP editing skills, make sure to check out that playlist right there for some more GIMP tutorials.